Hey guys, still here, and welcome back to Wargame. Today's Wargame video, we're going to be looking at an after-action replay sent in by a Noob Plus, and he asked me to have a look at his gameplay to see how he could have improved, what he could have done better. He says, "Hi, I'm new to multiplayer. I tried some games before. This is one of my better ones, I think. Maybe you have some tips to make my playstyle better." And that's exactly what these after-action reviews are for. What could you have done better? How could you have improved your setup? And maybe have um, a little bit more effectiveness on the field. Now, judging by the replay, it's quite long, 47 minutes. I'm going to be skipping through that at some point. Starting out, um, this, I'd say, is not ideal to begin. The M84 AK is a command tank. Very expensive. You don't need that. Especially in 10T10s like these, generally, if the enemy gets to here, to Echo, it's game over already. Um, I'd ideally say have this M84 AK go to golf if you really want to have a strong position. Aside from that, we can see a couple of units being positioned here. But I don't know where they're going. Make sure you place down attack markers and especially text markers to indicate what your intent is, where you're going, and potentially what sort of units you might need. Like over here we have kebab. This is the uh, <laughs> the kebab removal unit. And the kebab removal unit is going to be pushing in with um, seemingly a bit of infantry, AA, vehicles. At least he's intending on capturing this and bringing in a command vehicle to capture this sector. They can use that as a reinforcement point. Not seeing anything like that from Noob Plus. Aside from that, spawn your vehicles on the road. They start out faster, otherwise you're going to be dealing with off-road speeds first. I'm seeing M84As. I'm not seeing the um, advanced tanks. I mean, sure, these are medium heavies. But if you're going to be pushing, especially in the 10v10, which goes up to 50,000 points... Bring something a bit better, because you can bet your ass that the enemy is going to be bringing a lot of stuff. And judging by the amount of units that you can see cluttered... Uh, sure, quad stacks of T-72B 1987s, uh, 1989s at that. I'd say this this is a very high start game. So you get a lot of starting points. Now, he does have reconnaissance. It's one tank and one recon unit. For a column like this, that's not a bad start, but I'd bring a bit more. See, these M84As are pretty good tanks. 15 frontal armor, uh, 19 AP on the gun, good stabilizer. But encounter something like an M1A2, and you're going to be finding yourself in the shit very, very soon. Also, what's this Tatra doing? I think that he might be going up the road. Trying to get to here. The question, however, is... Oh, actually, he's not. What's his next move going to be after that? Let's say he got to this point. You get to the crossroads. What's your next move? Because you got zero cover. There's no way to position your vehicle so they have cover from HGMs. Um, if you have enemy HGM units operating from these buildings, good luck dodging the missiles, because there's no terrain incline either. So I'm not exactly sure what he's pushing here. Um, in fact, he's he's moved his units up the road, and then moved them across. Interesting. At least the OT-Tab 71's over there. And he offloaded Padobranchi. These are really good units to hold the line temporarily. They can do a lot of damage to enemy infantry with that boom bar. Oh, sorry, to enemy vehicles, not enemy infantry. And it looks like they're about to get their hands full. Hold on. Those are the Australians, if I'm not mistaken. Strop back here. Uh, make sure you bring your strop with you. If the enemy does do a helicopter push for some reason or another, yeah, it's the Vickers, then the strop over here, um, well, it's not bad, but it could have been more useful up there. Looks like his tanks are mostly all right. Unfortunately, I am not seeing a command unit. I am seeing a command unit in Uliana over on the left. 
So blue is definitely going to be bringing in additional units, and you're most likely to be seeing those coming through Jot, Ivan, etc. So that means that this position is fairly weak. And I'm not seeing a command unit on the way either. Situation like this, um, either ask Sarsi Bean over here, or Sari Bean, to send over his infantry unit, because it's airborne, it'll be there a lot faster. Or ask him to offload and get your own command tank over there. Command tanks generally last a little longer than units such as command infantry. Because they're far sturdier. Unless they get hit by clusters or HGMs. Yeah, this is a problem. He's pushing in with his tanks. But he doesn't know what he's pushing in to. So the M84AN, the recon tank, was the only recon that he had. So he's trying to push. Trying to get some damage in. But... Without any spotting capability for the tanks, and without any AA cover, uh, which is only now moving up, the Tigers were very quick to make short work of those tanks. And he could have provided good fire support from this little ridge line here with his tanks. So just keep your tanks up here, assess the situation, um, try to avoid all the cluster ammunition that's coming down on top of this little hill, and maybe push out a little bit, but not without air cover. And I'm just going to stress it again. Reconnaissance in a game like this is absolutely key. Without reconnaissance, without knowing what the enemy is up to, you're just screwed. Because you cannot react fast enough. Now, I'm seeing a pretty constant stream of units pushing back and forth. But I'm not seeing any new units come in from new plus. I'm not exactly sure why that is. Oh, we finally have a command unit on the move. By the way, I apparently misinterpreted uh, Kebab removal unit's intent to capture Gregory. Because he sort of went there. And then he didn't. Holy crap. This is new. Marching uh, 12, 16, 17 tanks at least right down the middle of the road. If you're able to do that then you know that the enemy has very, very little over there. I really wouldn't push that CV in there at the moment. Now you can see that the Padobranchi will be able to do some damage, and they can one-shot any tank that comes up the ridge here. But let's say that they are... They're taking a bit of fire. All these tanks are firing at one or two structures. And you got so many of them over here that they're all clogging up the road. So, and there we go. His recon is still inside the vehicle. For some reason, they still haven't seen that truck, though. Where the hell is that? Is that inside the building? Oh, never mind. It's very close to the building. Well, they haven't seen it, but now they're coming down the road. Where are your new units? Okay, now he's countering with helos. That's a good move. Miyutka 2M, pretty good missile. Uh, does a lot of damage. In a situation like this, you can easily fly an Energy 25T. Because the enemy at current, as far as we've seen, has almost no air cover. MI-24s would also be very good. Um, but he's playing with the Entente deck, so he doesn't really get access to any high-end MI-24s. In this case, the high-end anti-tank snipers, MiG-29Ms or similar, would not be very useful. Because they simply don't have the amount of missiles, and they cannot kill units fast enough. Now here's the air cover. And Top Gun is definitely making a push. I'm not sure exactly how the Specialny survived here. But these guys are very lucky. And they might even shoot down the Panther if they uh, get a couple of good shots at it. Okay, what are you bringing in? He's bringing in three strops. It's a logical reaction to bring in a couple of AA units. There we go. He split them up. Good man. I don't have to address that. Now, he pulled these things back, but there's no fob. Situation like this. Have them both selected. Right-click the fob. They're going to go there, resupply, and then wait. Or you could have them fly over there, so uh, right click, hold shift, and then click here, for example. So they're going to resupply and get right back here. This whole game is a 
big fat clusterfuck at the moment. Look at that. Blue has the entire middle ground. Red, though, is pushed up on the right flank. Red is also pushed up on the left flank. So you have this sort of U-shaped battleground. Which is not ideal for blue, because they can push on, uh, or they can get pushed on from pretty much anywhere. You have this large open area here, this little road down here. Um, they can push on to Gregory, although this is fairly defensible. They're already on their way pushing through Michael, so this is definitely a hotbed for blue and red activity. They got the zones over here, and they can make a move on Emma. As bad as that sounds. Um, red. No, blue has one, two, three, four spawn zones over there. All air power. Five. Six. Potentially a seventh on the way. Oh, and of course Roman. So they have plenty of spawn zones. Anyway. Back to new plus. Uh, he just spawned in 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 M84As. Again, pretty good tanks. But they're not very good if you don't know what's going on. These things come with medium optics. You need something with good optics or very good optics to be scouting for them. Those tanks don't have targets. They won't fire at anything. Now the strops over here are still very, very close. If the enemy really wanted to, they could knock these things out, all three of them, with one bombing run. Preferably a cluster bomb, although you could work with something along the lines of a B5, or uh, maybe a Deagle. These things are very, very uh, thin-skinned, so they don't need much. Oh, look at this. This is a lovely target for an airstrike. Situation like this, have one strop over there, one there, one there. Just make sure they don't get too clustered like this. Or there's a very good chance that you will indeed get clustered, like this area over here. Now let's speed things up a little, to see what he's doing. Blue somehow stopped pushing. Although they might be trying to resupply. What the hell is this Tunguska doing? That's an interesting use of a Tunguska. Balls of steel, this thing. Look at that! We're even seeing Weasel 1s. This, I suppose, is one of the very few occasions where a Weasel 1 Toe 2 could be coming in useful. Because a Weasel 1 has no fuel. Just 200 kilometers of autonomy and that is it. See, this is a problem. He saw that the reconnaissance vehicle was there only when the reconnaissance vehicle started firing. That's when it gave its position away and lost all of its good stealth. Or medium stealth, I think, for a unit like that. The MI2 is back here. And it's hovering low. It won't be spotting much. So make sure that if you have a reconnaissance helicopter, you either keep it a little closer, or you click on it and press Z on your keyboard, and it's going to go up. And with the higher elevation, it will be able to spot more. It's losing units to the Tigers again. One strop is not going to be enough. You're taking fire. Ooh. Oh, they took out the strop. Interesting. I thought the strop and the tiger would have similar range, but apparently the tiger outranges it. Does he have another strop anywhere? Not really. Okay. Situation over here, we have one spotter. We have a couple of AA units. We have one tank. And we have a Coloss. This is the second time that I'm seeing him do this. You don't need a Coloss this early. Only bring in resupplies when you really need them. And at the moment that is simply not true. You don't need it yet. This tank has fairly good autonomy. And is capable of firing a lot of rounds before it needs resupplying. If you have an unsteady flank like this. I wouldn't bring in reinforcements, or I would rather bring in reinforcements, but not resupply units. Because you don't know how long those things are going to last. Also, at this point, pull back your M84. You've seen that there are three chieftains coming in. You know that an M84 might get one of them, but then will certainly die. 
these things just have too much firepower between the three of them. So pull these things back and set up in a new firing line over here. Because from over here or over there, you can use that range that the M84 has. And if I'm not mistaken, it has a better gun than the Chieftain Mark 11. So you're going to be doing damage to the Chieftains, while the damage from the Chieftains should be negligible. Now let's see, blue and red are still very close for scores. There's about 100 points difference there. Now, before you're all going, oh my god, what a noob, he's making a ton of mistakes. Um, there are definitely things that could have been done better. I'm 100% with you right there. However, there are plenty of people who just keep making the same mistakes over and over again. This guy had the gods to send his replay over for me to look at. So he's indicating, hey, um, this is one of my first games, I want to improve, can you help me? And that, for me, definitely gets kudos. That means someone has character and is willing to look at what can be done better, instead of just going off in the chat, usually, at everybody else. Calling everybody else noobs when they contribute nothing to the team. We've all seen people like that on Wargame and or other games. And I generally do not consider them very nice people. There we go. M84 got hit three times. Um, I don't think it actually got a return shot off. And your Coloss is retreating. That is reversing out of there. That's a pretty fast reverse. Are you doing 100 kph in reverse? Hmm. You learn something new every day. Pulling back the MI2 is a good move. Chieftains will be able to provide cover for the Stormer, and the Stormer will knock out your recon. So if you're knocked back to a line like this, I'd set up HGM infantry. There, there, uh, and here. If those Chieftains do want to push, they're welcome to try. But they're going to push right into your HGMs. Not your tanks. No, don't push with tanks. Don't counter tanks with tanks. Unless you're seeing that they have three chieftains and you have a V-Hor, um, a T-80UK, an M1A2, anything along the lines of a 170 point tank. Countering tanks with similar tanks, and in this case inferior tanks, no. Bad call. Get HGM infantry, because those outrange the tanks, and those can make good use of the concealment offered by these tree lines here. Also get a bit of infantry reconnaissance. I would position them over here, making sure that they have a little bit more distance or a little less distance to the enemy than the HGM units. And from that position, they'll be able to get a little bit of spotting in. Maybe you can see those chieftains with them. Speed it up again, see how he develops the situation here. He is putting them into cover. You can see that they're blinking, so they're not detected. New reconnaissance tank. AA is coming in. Uh, he's bringing in HGM vehicles. I don't think I have ever used these. The MADA Polo. These things have good HGM firepower, but their range is limited at 2450. The problem with that is that a tank might get a shot off before the missile impacts, especially if that tank comes moving to you. So here's what's going to happen. Tank comes moving to you, you spot it, you fire. The missile's underway. The tank keeps pushing towards you and only has to do 175 meters before it can return fire. It only needs to get one shot off in this case and your vehicle is dead and your HGM just flies off. Infantry, or HGM infantry to be specific, does not have that problem, or at least usually does not, like the Conquerors. Not only do they have um, building cover, although preferably I would put them over here or here or there, but they also have more range, 26, 25. And that means you can fire off your missile and more than likely survive. Now he's being clustered. I'm not sure if the enemy is actually going to make a push or if he's just trying to wound his units a little. Let's see. 
I know there's a lot going on on the rest of the map, but I'm not going to be focusing on that too much. I just want to see how he's going to be managing his units over here. There's the reconnaissance infantry spawning in. He has another M80A1 over here. Barback surrenders, barback left the game. That's a blue. Yeah, that's a blue. Alright, special, and you start pushing towards there. Do what this guy's doing. Push to contact. There we go, the chieftains are still there. And he's pushing in with new tanks. Or he's spawning in a bunch of new tanks. But again, they're the M84A. You need something heavier. Napalm tanks, not a bad call. Those can be used to burn out units, especially infantry in here. Okay, SC-24 bombs the place. I'm not seeing any return fire from the Stormer just yet. It might... Oh. Another bombing run. The replay system is a bit bugged. If I slow it down, it speeds up. That's a little weird. Oh, 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 oh. There, slow down, damn it. Look at this, these tanks are using way too much speed. Yeah, this is definitely a bug in the replay system. I'm at 0.2% or 0.2 speed. What the hell is going on with the replay system? This looks a little better. Okay, I guess the game had to synchronize somehow. Um, this is your priority target. Kill that. And you might neutralize the zone and all of its income. See, this is when you can use the M84A. Because you don't need a ton of firepower. You could even go in with something even cheaper. Try to, if you're going to go in, put Napalm on these buildings over here. Because not only will you burn out infantry, but you will also be able to just try and stun as many vehicles as possible. Pushing up here with AA... It's not a good call. What's happening here is that the AA from over here can hit any helicopter that gets spawned in from over here or that happens to fly over from over there. If you push it up here, up this ridge line, it's going to get detected and killed. Not ideal, especially since you're playing with uh, resupply lines or reinforcement lines which are far longer than blues. Oh, here come the v horse. Finally. I was expecting these things quite a while ago. Commander Marine. These guys have definitely been burned. These guys are walking towards their own funeral. Or maybe I should say cremation. Premature though, because they're still alive. He's using the T-55s, but he's getting way too close. He's pushing in an unarmed recon truck or an unarmed uh, transport truck. Okay, if you have a strong position like this, with infantry, potentially ATGMs, and spawn points for tanks, try to lock it down. Napalm over here. Uh, your AA stays down there. You can have a couple of tanks which are going to come up this ridge over here, and then I would reverse them to this spot. So that they can provide fire support, but from a range where they're not likely to get insta-killed. And the other units, um, I'd say don't go up this ridge. But try to come up from over here, because you get a bit more range. And especially against infantry, that's a welcome development. Now he got 35 points, so he did kill the infantry. But there's quite a bit more. There's four Milan 2 teams. Which are trying to survive... Not doing a very good job at it at the moment. There we go. That's all the Milan team's dead. Now you really need a command vehicle. This is when that command tank, that one, could have been very handy. Also, this Vihor, bring it with you. At the moment, that Vihor and the other one over here are the best units that you have. Bring them. Deploy them on the front line. That's what they're for. They're not some sort of museum piece. Move them forward. Oh, there's still one chieftain surviving. 
You need to rush these structures with a couple of cheap infantry units and kill them. Double v whore coming in. Okay. Well, they just cannot quite see the chieftains. See, this is very risky. I would just wait for infantry. What's going to happen is that you are so close to the chieftain, that one, that even though it has 19 AP, and this thing has 18 frontal armor, it's not just going to do one damage, because the closer you get, the more damage you do. You can see he's backing off. Found a transport. Found the second transport. Chieftain's locking on. v -hor. There we go. One of those v got hit pretty bad. The worried one. That's because the range was so low. Okay, so now we have it. The area's clear. But we still don't have a command unit. We can see their command unit. Interestingly. And it looks like blue is going to be countering with a helo push very, very soon. See, this is when having a command tank very close would be very helpful. Because if you have a command tank over here, you can immediately spawn in a bunch of AA units and defend the zone, as well as scoring a ton of points. And we've got a couple of Israeli units coming in. Uh, not very good at firing on the move, these things. 15% stabilizer. As long as they will stay moving, they're not that much of a threat. The moment they slow down, that gets to be a very different story. There goes another M84. Okay, the Vihor is now moving up. He's also rushing in his Colossus. I saw him spawn in quite a number of those. You don't need to. You don't need to resupply the units instantly. You need to secure the place first, and then you can resupply. Your tanks don't need to be in pristine condition the whole time. There's a command tank. What the fuck happened to the left side for blue and red? Red was over there. And they just got completely pushed out of it. Now another trend I'm seeing here is again a lack of reconnaissance. I would want to have recon over here um, or over here. Make sure they don't fire, but from over these positions you can see what's coming down that road and how are you going to have to counter that. At the moment you simply don't know. Also this tank, way too close to the front line. These commander marines fortunately don't have a ton of anti-tank. But you don't know what the other structure is. Let's say it's another bit of commando infantry. They might not have a ton of anti-tank. But they do have very good accuracy. And they fire fairly quickly. So getting your vehicle that close is very, very dangerous. This is one or more of those positions where you can park a napalm tank over here. And you can pretty safely burn them out. You can just slowly approach them. And since your napalm tank has a range of a thousand you exceed the range of any infantry. Because the command marines only have a range of 700. So you can just put a flame wall around this building. This, however, is too close because you're almost on top of them. And the command marines... Are they... Yeah, they are using their LRAC. So that's their anti-tank weapon. They're currently working on the Podobranchi. But they were taking aim and have significantly damaged the TO-55. Now, it's 35k for red, 32 for blue. I think red might take the battle. Okay, putting some more fire on the structure or on the open area over here so that they cannot retreat. Very good move. I really like that. What's next? You're driving into a town. You're too close to the town. Position like this. Burn this. This part over here. The Gurk is currently are on the right side of the building. So from over here you can never get there. But you can put some fire over there, napalm. At this point I wouldn't quite do that though because you got BMP3s positioned to the south, which if the Gurkhas shift inside their own, uh, their own zone to these buildings, they're gonna get hammered by the BMP3s. In a situation like this, try to predict where the enemy is going. 
Where would you move your infantry to? And at the moment, the Gurkhas are... Well, they're not quite surrounded, but they're at least boxed in on three sides. This was unfortunate. I like the use of your napalm tank, but not the position where you're firing, because you're burning out your own friendly Padobranchi. That's not good. Try to coordinate. Oh, dear. Yeah, I think you just friendly fired one group of Padobranchi, because 30 points went up, and that was them. If there is very little resistance in this town, and there seems to be very, very little, don't burn too much. Only burn when the enemy... or that. Uh, only burn when the enemy has something very, very well entrenched. Look at that, he even got a command unit kill. He's burning the next structure. Um, if there would have been anything in this structure, you'd have been dead. So you can safely assume that there is nothing in there. Please don't get that flamethrower too close. No, he's burning the next structure. He's very systematic about burning everything out. That's a good play. Ah, damn it. Kavati knocked him out. Oh. Holy crap, he's going to put up a firewall. That is going to be a lot of napalm. And we got more fire coming in from the Burrettino. I'm not sure why some people on my Discord keep referring it to the Burrantino, because there is absolutely no N after the A over there, but it's the Burrettino. Definitely a good weapon if you want to be burning out units over here. So I'd suppose that the Givati are falling back if they're not dead. Uh, is he operating anywhere else? Yeah, sort of. And he has the Vihor over here. No. You're moving in here. This part has been cleared. You can safely assume that there is nothing inside this structure, that one, or probably the next. Because the books are there. And these books are pretty difficult to hide. But you don't know about these structures. Get too close. And that structure could suddenly pump an HGM into your side. Or a light and tank weapon of some sort. If you're going to be doing this, make sure you have infantry pushing through the buildings and you use your tank for fire support, not the other way around. Burn all the things. Coordinating four napalm tanks is not easy. There goes another structure. That was an Anafa taking fire from a Strop 2. Somehow it always looks like these tanks are urinating there in Napalm. What's that? That's infantry. That's the Givati. If this is indeed a 10v10 with a lot of income, then he must have had more points to spend. Now, it's not unusual to be floating a lot of points in a game like this. So, you're going to have a lot of points in reserve. But in a situation like this, where the Pado Branchi could use your assistance, be sure to lend it to them. Get more units to go in and help. That was too close to the Miluim. Miluim are very bad infantry, but... Even if they are, they can still kill you up close, especially against vehicles. This terrain is dreadful for napalm tanks usually. She cannot get any good line of sight. Shocked Cookie left the game. What a username. So it keeps moving. Again, you're trying to push with support units. You need, yeah, you need a bit of recon, but not really that type, but you need infantry. Urban areas like this, that's an infantry position. It's an urban warfare scenario. Mm, I'm not sure if you're doing anybody any favors by putting up napalm over here. Because by doing so, they cannot fire at you either. 
But you don't really know what they have. Look, this is why you have infantry. That's something that your tanks cannot do. Or at least not reliably. Top gun surrenders. I'm very interested in Top Gun's score as well, because he pushed with all those tanks right down the middle of the road there. Anyway, let's have a look. Um, 2658, losses 3115. A couple of reasons why that happened. One, too much use of medium tanks, so those were the M84As and the M84s, against superior numbers. Two, lack of reconnaissance. Three, um, you sent forward quite a lot of logistics units when they weren't needed and either they get killed or you're happily providing the enemy with logistics which is very kind but not really needed don't bring in logistics too fast because they also provide quite a bit of fireworks if they do get detonated by the enemy be very very careful now let's see where most of his losses came from um, yeah, that initial push with the M84A, uh, sorry, the M84A and the M84AN got knocked down hard by the Tigers. Then we had all those M1A1s, or the M1s and the M60A1s pushing through, um, killing off quite a few of your units. Tiger. Yeah, there's the Tigers again. Dietrich. Uh, that's the same guy, same helo. Which means a lack of AA. Chieftains. M84 versus Chieftain. I think the Chieftain will win that. In most scenarios. Helicopters got knocked down by the Quartal and the Mistral. I didn't even see these things. I might not have been paying attention to the right sector at the time. But a lack of reconnaissance is also pretty important here. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five. I'm seeing five dead reconnaissance units. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, six, miscounted. Six dead reconnaissance units on all these units is a very low number. I wanna see more reconnaissance in the field. Because with this amount, or this lack of eyes, you don't really know what the enemy's bringing in and how to counter it. Now, last thing I want to check is Top Gun. Holy shit, he was feeding. That quad stacking of tanks and pushing in with 20 tanks down the middle of the map looked interesting, but it really didn't get him too many points. Anyway, that's it for this after action report. I hope it was useful to you. There are quite a few things that you're doing right, but there's definitely some stuff you can improve upon. For the next couple of matches, focus on your reconnaissance. Don't try to improve everything at once. That's not going to work. You're only going to get overwhelmed. Focus on reconnaissance. Try to find what the enemy is doing. Bring more of that stuff, hide it, shuffle it around, see what works for you. Focus on that and see how that changes your playstyle. Anyway, that's it for this video. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you like what you're seeing and you like or you watch my videos more than Netflix, for example, then please consider or consider becoming a Patreon supporter because I can really use your help. I wouldn't be doing this full time. And uh, if all of you guys would just donate $1 a month, I would be very, very happy and I could actually do this full time and stream this game a hell of a lot more. Anyway, that's it. Thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed and I'll see you soon for more Wargame.